Дольче Дунков, ты еще увидишь, как из-за твоей продажной глупости, Анна Лена Бербок, Берлин будет гореть. Надо как-то сделать так, чтобы американские солдаты начали гибнуть. Да мы сотрем порошок Варшаву и Вильнюс. Почему мы признаем Францию и ее границы? Как я хочу посмотреть, чтобы Урсулиха фон дер Ляля корчилась с куском беспилотников в глотке. Когда на сегодняшний день мы говорим, что война будет безъядерной, мы, наверное, лукаем. По количеству надуш населения, правда, Канада ее опережает, но Америка – это мировая держава подобрела. Я сейчас требую спалить Берлин. For decades, Russian leaders and propagandists have used false claims to pave the way for military aggression. We've seen it with the Russian invasion of Chechnya, Georgia and Ukraine. But just how far is Russia willing to push? Are its imperialistic aspirations limited to its neighbors? According to the rhetoric coming from Russian politicians and propagandists, the Kremlin's appetite for conquest knows no bounds. For example, here is Kremlin propagandist and main hater of the West, Vladimir Solovyov, attempting to depict the US as the leader of the collective West, suggesting it poses a threat to Russia. Consequently, he argues that Moscow's ambitions for conquest should stretch as far as the Mexican borders. We should understand, our borders go all the way to Mexico. Our borders don't end in the city of Chop. Our borders end wherever the security of our country will be ensured. If we need the Atlantic Ocean, then it will be the Atlantic Ocean. But it's impossible to reach these borders when our 150 million stand against a half billion and that is just on the European continent. This means that we should stop being shy while we watch the invading armies being prepared for when they think the Red Army is exhausted by its vanguard engagements with the Ukro-Nazis to strike us in our soft underbelly, to strike us from the north, to strike us from the west. For this purpose, they will attempt to bring Polish troops into Kaliningrad. With the next strike, I don't rule out, they will try to take St. Petersburg. However, unlike Russia, neither the US nor the West issues threats to annex territories of other nations. No Western country threatens to invade or attack Russia. This is just another example of Solovyov's hysteria, which no longer surprises anyone. And here is him attempting to disparage Europe, leveling accusations of Nazism and colonialism, while also suggesting that Europe should brace itself for demands of retribution due to its history of colonizing and subjugating other regions for centuries. No, we understand how we to Europeans, do you even grasp our sentiments towards you? Have you bothered to look at the map lately? You're just a small patch, a mere garden plot in Eurasia. In essence, if we decide, you can be simply eliminated. You hold no significance. Once you boasted a grand culture, but you've forsaken it. You've turned your back on your Christian traditions. You've distanced yourselves from the great history of Islam, which, incidentally, has deep roots in Europe for many centuries. Do you even comprehend the direction you're heading? Do you truly comprehend how we perceive you here? How we interpret your words? Do you grasp the sentiments we harbor towards Borel? Because everything you say reveals your inherent Nazism. You can't even conceal it. It's ingrained in your nature. You operate under colonialist ideologies. And despite your attempts to mask it, your true colors always shine through. And the most damning aspect for you, as Borel understands, is that your double standards, particularly regarding Ukraine and Israel, have united the entire world against you. You're a population of a half a billion cramped in the minuscule territory and the inhabitants of the countries you have plundered, oppressed and violated for centuries will soon come knocking on your door. They won't be seeking employment in your factories. They'll be demanding reparations from you. And you won't like it, but they're coming. It's quite ironic that Salavio mentions Nazism colonialism and reparations, given that both Nazism and fascism appears to be ingrained in Russia's government, as evidenced by its brutal war against Ukraine. It's Russia that blatantly exposes its intentions to dismantle a sovereign nation. It's Russia that forcibly removes thousands of children from their homes. And it's the Russian military that leaves behind a grim trail of civilian mass graves and torture chambers as it imposes the Russian world on Ukrainian cities and villages. And here is a Russian soldier who went to kill Ukrainians for Putin's ambitions, fantasizing on a national channel that the ultimate outcome of Russia's war against Ukraine will be the collapse of NATO. The outcome will be the same. Russia is on God's side. As I always say, 
God loves us and God will not abandon us. This issue is clear. Russia will win in this SMO and other fights. Yes, until 2029-30 we will have to work hard. We will need to put in a lot of hard work. But I can guarantee you this. The end result of this SMO at the final destination will be the dissolution of the NATO bloc in its current format. Most of the states currently following America's lead like obedient puppies will be on their knees, swearing allegiance to Russia and begging to join our coalition. There is no doubt about it. As the world grapples with escalating tensions, one thing becomes abundantly clear. The rhetoric of conquest and aggression from the Kremlin poses a significant threat to the global peace and stability. That's why in the face of the looming threat from Moscow, the civilized world must join forces to counter Russian aggression both on the battlefield and on the information front. After all, there is no other recipe against the world of lies than courage.